Hello, and welcome to the second presentation of the online Corsia tutorial. This is part one on the explanation of Corsia and resolution A393. Throughout this and the other online Corsia tutorial presentations, references to specific paragraphs in assembly resolution A393 will be given. It is recommended to have a copy of the resolution available to look at during these tutorial sessions. The document can be found on the web through the IKO's Environmental Site's 39th Assembly link at www.icao.int and clicking on the Environmental Protection and then clicking on 39th Assembly. This tutorial is going to go through the key aspects of Assembly Resolution A393 which sets the overarching design features of Corsia. There are six key design features of Corsia. This presentation will focus on the first four design features, which are phased implementation, emissions coverage through a route-based approach, new entrants, and technical exemptions. The remaining two design features, offsetting requirements and review mechanism, will be discussed in a subsequent presentation. We will start with the concept of phased implementation. Paragraph 9 of Resolution A393 states that Corsia implementation will be conducted in a phased approach. The decision to use the phased approach was intended to accommodate the special circumstances and respective capabilities of states while minimizing market distortion. Corsia starts with a pilot phase from 2021 through 2023, after which is the first phase from 2024 through 2026 followed by the second phase from 2027 through 2035. An important aspect of this phase structure is that each phase is a multiple of three-year terms, which corresponds to the Corsia's compliance cycle of three years according to paragraph 16 of Assembly Resolution A393, allowing states and operators a three-year period of time to make adjustments as needed to comply with Corsia's offsetting requirements. You may be wondering how participation in each phase is determined. In the pilot and first phases, from 2021 to 2026, state participation is voluntary, and it is up to each state to determine their participation. All member states are encouraged to participate in the pilot and first phases of Corsia. In the second phase, from 2027, paragraph 9 of the resolution determines that all states will participate in Corsia except the exempted states. These exemptions in the second phase will be discussed in more detail in subsequent slides. As of May 31, 2017, a total of 70 states have already announced their voluntary participation in Corsia from the start of the pilot phase. It is important to highlight that these 70 states who have volunteered to participate are representing more than 87.68% of global international aviation activity. As requested by the Assembly, ICAO will update this information on participating states in the percent coverage on the ICAO Corsia website as more states volunteer to participate. Unlike the voluntary participation of states in the pilot and first phases from 2021 to 2026, the second phase of Corsia applies to all member states, with two noted categories to which exemptions are applicable, aviation-related criteria and socioeconomic indicators. These criteria for the exemption of states from the Corsia offsetting requirements in the second phase is defined in A393 paragraph 9E. For aviation related criteria, there are two noted thresholds, which are states with an individual share of international aviation activities in revenue ton kilometers, or RTKs, in year 2018, below 0.5% of total RTKs, and states that are not part of the list of states that account for 90% of total RTKs when sorted from highest to the lowest amount of individual RTKs. First, you may be wondering what exactly is revenue ton kilometers or RTK. Well, 
It's the utilized or sold capacity for passengers and cargo expressed in metric tons multiplied by the distance flown. In other words, the RTK levels correspond to the volume of air transport activity. As an aircraft operator carries more passengers and more cargo for a longer distance, the RTK levels of the operator get higher. A state's RTK represents the total RTK levels of all aircraft operators registered to that state. Annual RTK data is being reported to ICAO by member states as part of ICAO statistics program and published in the annual report of ICAO Council. RTK data for the year 2018 will be used for the purposes of determining the exemptions of states from the second phase of Corsia. Now that you understand what RTK represents, you may be wondering what it means to be below 0.5% of total RTK, or not part of the 90% of the total RTK, from highest to lowest. The state's individual RTK share is calculated by dividing the state's RTKs by the total RTKs of all states. Those states who have an individual RTK share below 0.5% of the total RTK will be exempt unless the cumulative RTK share is less than 90%. The cumulative RTK share is calculated by sorting the individual RTK shares from the highest to lowest, then successively increasing the value by summing the RTK shares from highest to lowest until the value is greater than 90%. In other words, a state whose individual RTK share is less than 0.5% but as part of the 90% cumulative RTK is included in the second phase. A state whose individual RTK share is less than 0.5% and not part of the 90% cumulative RTK is exempt from the second phase. The goal is to cover at least 90% of the international aviation activity in the second phase of Corsia. The second set of exemption criteria is based on socioeconomic criteria. These states are defined as least developed countries, or LDCs, small island developing states, or SIDS, landlocked developing countries, or LLDCs. Regardless of the level of international aviation, RTK share, these LDCs, SIDS, and LLDCs are also exempted from the second phase of Corsia. That said, these states exempted by aviation-related criteria and socioeconomic criteria are still encouraged to voluntarily participate in Corsia. We have just completed the explanation on Corsia's phased implementation and will now move to the second design feature, emissions coverage designed through a route-based approach. With the phased implementation of Corsia, there will be different timing in the participation of states. But, what does the state's participation mean for the coverage of emissions under Corsia? Actually, the concept of a route-based approach is to translate the participation of states in Corsia into the coverage of emissions for offsetting requirements. The objective behind a route-based approach is the intention to treat all operators equally on the same route. This objective is met by including all international routes linking two states both of which are participating in Corsia. If, however, one or both of the states on the route are not participating in Corsia, then the route is not included in the offsetting requirement. This is outlined in paragraph 10 of the Assembly Resolution A393. This concept may be more easily understood through a simplified diagram. In this example, we are depicting a simplified world of four states. Imagine, in year X, the two states at the top in white are participating in Corsia. The two states at the bottom in gray are not participating. Due to the route-based approach, the routes indicated with green checks are included in Corsia, while the routes indicated with red and brown X's are not included. The green checks indicate routes between states that are both participating in Corsia. The red X's indicate routes between states that only one state is participating in Corsia, thus not included. And the brown X's indicate routes between states that neither state is participating in Corsia, thus not included either. 
it is important to note that the roots included in Corsia means that emissions from the included roots would be subject to the Corsia's offsetting requirements. Even if roots are not included under Corsia's offsetting requirements, the emissions are still to be reported, but not used for offsetting requirements. In this scenario, one year later in year x plus one, one additional state in the bottom right has decided to now participate. The number of covered routes indicated by green checks have now increased, as have the international emissions coverage for Corsia's offsetting requirements. Now, you understand how the participation of states in Corsia under the phased implementation will affect the coverage of emissions for Corsia's offsetting requirements based on the route-based approach. The examples we just went through have tried to capture the route-based approach design feature of Corsia. There are other design features that affect the emissions coverage of Corsia as well, starting with the topic of new entrants. Referring to paragraph 12 of the resolution, this criterion applies to individual aircraft operators and not specifically to states. New entrants are aircraft operators that initiate their aviation-related activity after the start of Corsia in 2021, and they are not a continuation of aviation-related activity previously performed by another aircraft operator. These new entrants are exempted from the application of the Corsia offsetting requirements for the first three years, or until its annual emissions exceed 0.1% of the total 2020 emissions from the international aviation sector. The condition that applies first will determine when a new entrance emissions are subject to offsetting requirements if it operates on the routes covered by Corsia. It is important to note that emissions of a new entrant are still to be reported from the beginning, regardless of the exemptions for offsetting requirements. A simple example is shown in the table. In the case of Operator A, that starts its operations in 2022, the emissions do not go beyond 0.1% for three years until 2024. Therefore, it will start its offsetting requirements from the subsequent year in 2025. Operator B, on the other hand, goes above the 0.1% threshold in 2023 and therefore starts its offsetting requirements in 2024. One of the common misunderstandings with this requirement is reference to the total emissions in 2020. This represents the total emissions of the international aviation sector as it is calculated for the year 2020, regardless of the routes covered or not by Corsia. The last design feature discussed in this presentation are the technical exemptions. Paragraph 13 of the resolution addresses technical exemptions to Corsia, which are designed to avoid administrative burden to low levels of international aviation activity. Emissions from aircraft operators are exempt if they are emitting less than 10,000 metric tons of CO2 emissions from international aviation per year. Specific aircraft size and operations are exempt if they are less than 5,700 kilograms of maximum takeoff mass or operations related to humanitarian, medical, and firefighting. It should be clarified that the previous discussions on exemptions of states from the Phase 2 route-based approach and exemptions of new entrants are related to the coverage of emissions for offsetting requirements and those exempted emissions still need to be part of the reporting requirements. However, technical exemptions under this paragraph 13 apply both to offsetting requirements and reporting requirements. In other words, these low levels of international activity are outside of the scope of Corsia. We have completed the review of the first four of six key design features of Corsia. These design features are important to determine the coverage of emissions for Corsia offsetting requirements every year from 2021. The remaining two design features will be covered in a subsequent online Corsia tutorial presentation. Now for a quick review of the design features and the resolution's corresponding paragraphs. Phased implementation is outlined in paragraph 9. Route-based approach is outlined in paragraph 10. New entrants are outlined in paragraph 12. And technical exemptions are outlined in paragraph 13. 
Thank you for participating in part one of the explanation of Corsia and Resolution A393 session of the online Corsia tutorial. After completing this presentation, you are encouraged to undertake the illustrative exercise regarding the participation and admissions coverage of Corsia. After completing the exercise, you can also review the associated presentation providing a short explanation of the illustrative exercise with solutions. As always, more information can be found on the ICAO's Environment webpage at www.icao.int forward slash env.